Good morning, good afternoon, Power Hitter, Solar Warrior Tribe. Today is Tuesday, October 25th, 2022. My name is Jarrett McAllister, your mentor and co-host, alongside my brother from another mother, Jonathan Renasso. What's up, bud? How are you? Howdy, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon. If you haven't seen my sign here, nobody cares, win the day. Nobody True cares. that. Just win the day, True. Jarrett. Get on that treadmill, lose lots of weight, get healthy like you're doing. Yep, yep. Don't forget, build muscle and kick ass in sales. <laughs> That's the most important part, but. Right on. You ready for today? Yeah, we got a good training lined up. Maybe we'll share a few success stories uh, first before we rock and roll. I thought you were going to talk sports for a little bit first. <clears throat> Not when oh, we can do that, Bill, <laughs> if, you, if you truly like, but we won't. <laughs> Not much Not to talk week. about in San Diego. <clears throat> uh, Sorry about that. Yeah, bummer. <clears throat> success story? All, All right. right. Who has a success story? Go ahead and let's line up a few. Go ahead and raise your hand and then, uh, or throw some in the chat. You don't want to talk out loud on the Zoom. What do we have first? Trey Hopper oh, had six deals this month. Damn, that's amazing. Sweet. I know Jeffrey Hugh out there has four or five deals already sold this month as well. Shout out to both of you guys. Uh, I will say a uh, shout out to Aaron Knudsen, loan officer from Cali Mortgage, um, along with his brand new recruit, Victoria. They started teaming up, tackling his database, brought one appointment yesterday, assigned it to me, and we ended up doing an 18 kilowatt size system with a, with a well, we went for the end phase battery. Um, unfortunately, they did not qualify for that amount. Um, and so we're peeling back the battery, just going to go ahead with the solar system. Uh, but one call close, really sweet deal. Um, congratulations to both of you guys. Awesome. Let's kick it over to Jordan Shaw, the man, the myth, the legend. Expansion yeah. King. What's up, Expansion King? I'm doing well. How about you guys? Awesome. Good. Cool. Cool. Really short, sweet. Sold my first what I'm calling the baby battery on the end phase client was like, do we have anything else smaller? And I threw it out there as an option and practically sold it over email. I remember we met a few weeks ago in, or maybe it was actually in September, but I don't fully remember the appointment to be honest with you, just because of what was going on. But uh, they kind of went back and forth on email and it was like, yeah, we're going to go ahead and move forward with 28 panels and the baby battery. I'm like, I've never, I can't wait to actually see this thing because I've never seen one in person. So that'd be kind of fun. Great. Three kilowatt battery, kilowatt hour battery? Yeah, I'm just, whenever I'm in a consult, uh, when they're talking about batteries, I say, I just call them, I call it the baby battery. So the way in which I position it now is I talk about like the larger battery, but if they're interested in the battery, I'm starting to pivot more towards solar edge just because I like that chemistry and the power output because it's closer to like, like a power wall. But if they don't like the price tag on it and they want to go lower, I said, well, you can always like, I start out with the like $9,500 baby battery. So that's kind of like your, your in between that just give you the, you know, peace of mind is what I'm kind of the way in which I'm framing it. I've never sold one. I have a tendency to talk people out of them before I talk them into them just because they have a misconception about it, but just the market we're in, as you know, JB, but um, yeah, but yeah, over the weekend. I, I do feel, I do feel with the baby battery, when you pair that with the IQ8s, that it could be effective, you know, because it's it, you are getting that like sunlight backup and then the baby battery kind of kicks in if there's like cloud cover or, you know, something, it wasn't getting direct or enough. It could kind of get you through the day, nothing too crazy, not over promising anything. But I think I would never just go sunlight only. You would want at least that baby battery I, with it. Agree? For the extra 2K, like why would you not, right? And I think there's yeah. some there's some areas actually specifically in Riverside community where they seem to always lose power during um, like the day. Like to me, I'm like, I'd lead with almost like a baby battery. <laughs> 
to the three kilowatt hour battery first because they're only ever losing it for a few hours at a time and it's more of a hassle and they always say well it's bright out like and just the entire community basically just goes dead like i feel like that has more practical value for the average person and then you've got your power users like oh no i want i want to make sure i've got all these circuits backed up and where where you want at least a 10 kilowatt hour battery pack so um i fully agree i think i think i agree with you with just like the leveraging of that so i'm not a yeah, I just I, I like to I do talk people out of it more than I talk them into it just because they think like they're going to need it and everything. But um, yeah, that's the first one. So I'm looking forward to seeing that one installed. I think it's down in Temecula is where where that one will be. Cool, man. Right on, Jordan. Good job, brother. Mr. Bonilla in the hizzle. What's up, bro? How are you? Morning, Jared. Morning, Jonathan. Morning, team. So I just wanted to give a, a quick shout out to the my team out in Puerto Rico to the three top leaders out there leading the team, Nita Jimenez, Angel Rivera, and Juan Tua. So as you know, we're not open yet in Puerto Rico, but I shared the vision of how we could help them get clients in multiple states here with power. So they're flying into the Mentor Factory this weekend, and they're also flying into Orlando, Florida to a door knocking uh, in two weeks, and they're going to be helped by Ramsey Clark. So you know, big shout out to them leading the way for, for that team out there in Puerto Rico. Right on, right on. Awesome. Nice, nice Anthony. Standing. Yeah, Puerto Rico coming soon with the uh, the interest rates, Fed hikes, the lenders. There's been some pushback, but power is uh, trying to overcome it and prevail and get some lending options and hopefully launch by the end of the year. So fingers crossed, pick some butt. Great job. All right. Well, let's keep it going. Thank you, as always, Jarrett, on your walking treadmill looking good over there. <laughs> All right. So today we have an awesome training in uh, just a few moments. And I want to really emphasize today, 5 o'clock Pacific, 8 Eastern, Career Week. If you haven't seen the emails and notifications, please check out your email. Tonight is Roofing, HVAC, and Home Services, a virtual call from 360 Headquarters Stage, Charles Thompson. Bobby will be interviewing some of the biggest HVAC and roofing companies that have joined our platform, Kicking Butt. So I've already invited a couple HVAC companies last night, um, and you all should do the same. Tomorrow at 5 is the Real Estate Mortgage Industry Zoom. There's special videos, special interviews just for these demographics, guys. And anyone in real estate or mortgage, their business is at a standstill right now with these interest rates. They will be interviewing the ex-CEO of uh, Keller Williams, Chris Haller. And they'll be interviewing a mortgage team that did billion dollars of loans last year. Both individuals have joined Power Solar. Uh, so it's on for the real estate game. Invite as many people as you can today to join that Zoom tomorrow or home services tonight. If you're newer here, every Thursday on powercalendar.com, take an onboarding 12 and 5 Pacific. Every Monday, JC does a 10 a.m. Zoom call, which is amazing mindset. And then um, Every Monday at 5 Pacific, the company has a business call as usual that you can invite and build into. Next week, an exciting announcement. Trey Hara here on the call. Uh, his father, Francisco Hara, who is the director of Giving Business Soul, and they partner with Prosperity Homes, and they're the reason why we do impact journeys. And they're going to be teaching how to do Breath work, mindfulness, and most importantly, how to get in a flow state, how to maximize your body, your sleep, your diet, your exercise, things you can do to really get in a flow state and make the most out of uh, this industry and business and your life. So Chris will have a few nuggets to share and Francisco, Jose, and team will be leading next Tuesday, 10 Pacific. You don't want to miss that. There's going to be some free gifts probably given out for those that attend. And as Anthony Bonilla said, um, this is a uh, JC's running a mentor factory this weekend in person, Orange County, Downey, California, go to solarmentorfactory.com. We have Danny Pessy. We have other guest speakers, two days, nine to five, jam packed, fly in if you can. 
It's going to be epic. Make sure to get a ticket if you haven't already. And uh, we're going to be looking forward to a two-day virtual convention, probably in February. We've got two more Power Day events coming up, a virtual Power Day November, an in-person Power Day December. I'll announce those next time. And we'll probably do a San Diego two-day uh, two epic in-person power convention, Power World, towards the end of summer next year. So much, much more to come. But you've already seen the assets on Career Week. Here's the flyers and images I was texting out to my friends and realtors uh, last night and today. So make sure to get those in your email. All right. So I'd like to introduce our uh, trainers and guest speakers today. I'll let them share their screen here in one second. But quick shout out to uh, Sam and David here. They actually trained the team in Downey, California on a similar training. And today they're gonna come up and talk to us about really just basic roofing 101, basic roof types. What is a comp out lightweight tile? What is concrete tile? What is asphalt shingle? Gonna give us some awesome education and we're gonna do some Q and A at the end. So David and Sam, please take it away. There you go. Good morning, can you hear me? Yes, sir, sounds great. Good morning, everyone. Perfect. Thanks for the opportunity. I appreciate it. So yes, this is Sam with One Stop Roofing. We're one of the roofing partners with Power. Privileged to be here this morning and sharing some of this information. And like uh, Jonathan said, this is really uh, Roofing 101. <clears throat> it had uh, helped the previous group we met with. So we got the opportunity to present again. So we do appreciate that. Um, basically, we have one mission, if you don't mind. <clears throat> moving on to the next slide. <clears throat> so what we understand what, what you guys need to do is you are all salespeople and so are we. So we have the same mindset in regards to closing business. So we know what you guys need out there to uh, be empowered to close more deals. So what we offer uh, is, uh, you know, I wanna say, you know, is it's really a quick turnaround time on your request. So. We've worked with quite a few consultants in the last uh, you know, several months. We've been a power actually partner for a couple of years now. But uh, what, what we have, can you, uh, let me see here. Okay, what, what, what we offer is a 24 hour turnaround quote. So basically what that means is a lot, of, uh, could you go back, yeah. So basically what that means is a lot of consultants uh, contact us, they give us the property address, uh, they give us some basic information in regards to the materials that's required. And, and uh, what we do, we run a, a uh, we order a report that generates all the measurements that we, are, we need and we are able to provide a quote uh, based on the measurements that we receive. Uh, we know there are sometimes we've had requests where <clears throat> there, uh, there's a need for a client visit uh, we don't charge for that. I know you guys actually, the corporate office actually pays, but uh, that is a uh, uh, free service by us. We know that not every client is the same. There's a lot of unique, unique applications. And sometimes they want that touch and feel by a local rep to go out there and provide additional consultation. So we are also available uh, to, to provide client visits as well as conference calls. Sometimes they're satisfied with just a basic conference call, get on, on and they may have some basic questions. Uh, and uh, like I mentioned, since we are salespeople out there, you know, we know that there is no office hours when you're in sales. So we do a work around the clock. We don't mind taking calls late at night on weekends and sites. So that is absolutely not a problem. Uh, there is a protocol, everything still needs to go to roofingatpower.com, but we're just here to introduce ourselves and uh, provide an avenue of support. Uh, what I'm going to do in the next several slides is uh, kind of go over, like Jonathan said, a, 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 a roofing 101. What are, what are the different types of roofs out there? What to look for and such. So the most basic uh, roof types that you will see out there are called Asphalt shingles, sometimes they're referred to as composition shingles. These, uh, about 80% of the roofs out there uh, use this type of a material. 
Uh, the different uh, types of asphalt shingles is displayed right here on the uh, on the slide. So the one on the left are what is called a standard asphalt shingle, which is about 80% of the uh, houses in, in, in this location uh, use the standard asphalt shingles. And the other one on the right is called presidential. The presidential is more defined, as you can see, uh, when you look at the roofs, uh, there's just more dimensional. And the reason for that is there are thicker type shingles. Now, why invest into something like that? Because there's a 20% premium on, on presidential shingles. 90% of the time, it's really the HOA requirement. It's not necessarily what the customer wants, it's what the HOA is requesting the customers to have on their rooftops. Uh, the reason they're thicker is really they're made for more severe weather, but you know, we're blessed to live down here with gorgeous weather, you know, 360 days out of the year. So <clears throat> we don't have any issues with that. But you know, in areas where there's hails and storm, that is the product of choice. So those are the two types of um, asphalt shingles uh, that are mainly available out there in, uh, in California. Um, Jonathan, do you want me to pause for questions or do you want me to just move through it? How, what, what should be the... Uh... Yeah, no, I think we're doing good. I'll, uh, I'll let you know if there's any questions that come in. We can save the majority to the end. Okay, um, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, if either of you do have the ability to turn your camera on to see your pretty faces, um, feel free. Uh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, the next I will go into uh, tiles, the different types of tiles. So what you see majority of the time, on the left you see the S shaped concrete tiles. That was what is referred to in the industry, and uh, the reason really is 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 the, the the looks of it. They look like an S clay type, and uh, I would say about in Orange County, especially about seventy percent of the houses have this type of a tile, which is called the S shape. On the right, you see uh, <clears throat> light and, and, uh, and standard weight. So when you're out there, it's very hard to determine whether they have light concrete or standard weight concrete. And the difference is really the weight. So the light weight concrete weighs about 600 pounds per 100 square feet of roof. And then the standard weighs about 900 pounds. You don't really need to get too involved in that piece of it, but this is just for your knowledge that there are two types of weights. And uh, the reason that's important is because the, 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 the more weight you put on a roof, the, the, the house needs to have the structural integrity to manage that weight. So that comes uh, becomes a factor when we go into getting permits. It also becomes a factor when a customer has a certain type of a roof and they wanna switch to concrete. So to make it simple, if they have concrete, they're very easily switched to another concrete top. If they have an asphalt shingle or metal shingle roof, don't open up the conversation for them to go into concrete because the chances are, that they would need a structural engineer to bless that house in order to receive a permit. And that is a very cumbersome project. It's a very dirty project. They have to open up the walls. Uh, they have to do a lot of testing and the cost is about eight to $10,000. And that does not necessarily guarantee that they will be approved. So just you know, bear in mind, if someone has metal or asphalt shingle, and they're thinking about concrete tiles, you know, you want to have that conversation in regards to this material is a lot heavier than what you have now. And the chances are the city would not allow for that to happen. You can go to the next one. <clears throat> so this is, a, this is an area where I've seen a lot of reps have questions on uh, flat roofs. What are the different types of flat roofs and uh, what, uh, yes, I will also, I'll, 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 I'll definitely explain that. I just had a question I will, I will definitely address. So <clears throat> in regards to uh, flat roofs, there are really two types of flat roofs. On the left, you have the torch down or it's also referred to as TPO. And basically the reason it's called torch down, the material comes in rolls 
and and they use a torch as you can see in that picture a hot uh, flame in order to melt the edges of the material and for it to uh, to 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 roll on the particular roof so when does that get uh, the application for that is typically in a small area and when i say small area a lot of times a uh, a customer has a house and they have a flat area they have a patio area and uh and uh and and it's it's okay for us to put the torch down material now on the right is a more of a sophisticated uh roofing uh project which is called a hot mop now the hot mop is uh used for large roofs as you can see on the bottom of that particular slide this is a very large flat roof and also areas of concern you have here is there's actually a wall around the roof that roof when it rains it almost turns into a swimming pool so you know there's the water does not roll off that roof other than the you know some drains that that roof may have so in those instances, it's very important to be able to talk about a hot mop type of a project versus a torch down. There is a premium for it. There's about a 30% price increase between a hot mop just because of the extra material that is used and the way that it's done. But that becomes a really a foolproof uh, type of a roofing project. Now, uh, there was a question about you know installing solar panels so solar panels can go on on either type of material uh, um, as well as the tiles uh, and we'll, i will get in the uh, the types of different um uh so how flat roofs can be slanted roofs be so yeah so uh the typically 412 is a maximum there's a question about the the pitch of the roof and when we actually recommend uh torch down so 412 4 over 12 pitch is pretty much the maximum on uh on torch down so uh anything higher than that needs to go into an asphalt shingle uh project and that is code by the city so uh yes i'm saying that the hot mop is a lot more expensive than tpo that is uh, that's a question that that came through and the reason for that again is it uses a lot more material uh on on the roof and also the labor is 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 uh, it's a much higher skilled labor <clears throat> so you can go ahead to the next uh, slide david so here is basically the process and, and and i just wanted to explain uh because you guys go through your permitting process and the roofing companies go to through theirs so how does it work the day that the customer signs off on okay we want to go ahead and uh, uh install a new roof what happens first the first thing that happens we apply for the city permit and uh <clears throat> Our process is a lot faster than the uh, solar process. Typically, we can get a, obtain a city permit within a week. So once that's uh, received, uh, we schedule the tear off process. And basically, the tear off is what are the truck rolls to the house. Uh, there's a dump truck, or there may be a dumpster uh, delivered to the house, and the material on the on the roof gets torn off and it gets dumped into the truck and it goes into a um, assigned uh, a disposal site. And that's very important that you just, you, there needs to be certain areas that you can dispose of the materials. Once that's done, the first inspection is scheduled by the city. The only uh, reason that inspector shows up is to check the condition of the material, which typically is plywood it could be ship laps or basically the decking or the wood underneath the uh the current roof to make sure that it is it is uh, healthy so that's really the first step that the inspector uh, checks once they bless the deck that's when they actually the the project will start typically majority of the roofers will check will change all the flashing around the vents and then at that point, the underlayment is installed on the entire roof. Let me see, standard weight tiles are less expensive. Yes, so standard weight tiles are less expensive than, uh, than the lightweight. 
but not a lot. Basically, there's about, no, go ahead, go back, go back. Uh, uh, David, if you go back. Yeah, so uh, light, lightweight tiles have about a 10% uh, a premium over it. So it's not a big price difference. And then once the, uh, the underlayment is installed on the roof, then the asphalt shingles uh, gets installed. All the uh, vents are painted to match the color of the roof. And once that project is complete, that's when the second inspection or they call the final inspection is scheduled. So at that point, the uh, inspector will come out and take a look at the, uh, take a look at the project and make sure it's done correctly. There are certain rules and regulations in regards to how it's nailed down and uh, you know, uh, make sure that the flashing is done right. So at the second uh, uh, inspection, it's a little bit more detailed than the first one. And they sign off on the final permit card and, and the, typically the permit card is simply to hand it back to the customer. That is their permit. And an average uh, uh, roofing project for asphalt shingles takes about three to five days. Um, let me see a question here. Inspection only with that is rotten or damaged. Yes, so yes, yeah, so th there was a question in regards to when does the, the decking gets uh, corrected. So when the tear off is scheduled and the asphalt or whatever material is removed from the roof, uh, at that point, um, the crew will identify what needs to be changed because all roofers wanna make sure that when the inspector shows up, the condition of the roof is healthy because we want to pass inspection so we can start the project. So on the same day, the damaged wood is identified. Typically, a, a pictures are taken and then they are sent back to uh, your project manager, providing them that information saying, you know, this is what needs to get done and this is approximate cost of these changes. It gets approved and then the uh, decking is fixed at that point to make sure that when the inspector comes, it's ready to go. Um, so uh, yeah, so so in regards to uh, plywood, it's usually about, yes, it's about 100 to $125 per sheet installed. Um, that, that number has been steady for a while. There was a time that the price of plywood uh, went skyrocket, but that is typically what the, the cost per a sheet is. And each sheet is eight by four, so it's 32 square feet. So at what point is determined that the fascia boards need to be replaced? Good question. So the fascia board it needs to be replaced before the actual roofing gets completed. And the reason for that is, is there's a piece called the drip edge, which is a metal piece that is an L-shaped piece that goes at the perimeter of the roof. It, it goes underneath the asphalt shingle and over the fascia. So it needs to be changed before that material gets installed. Otherwise, it makes it a lot more difficult to change that fascia or you may have to remove that um, drip edge uh, first before you change the fascia and reinstall it. So uh, the, uh, the fascia needs to be changed before the actual roofing gets completed. Uh, do the roofers paint the new fascia? Yeah, so uh, a lot of times with, uh, okay. Uh, so the fascia is not included in, in projects typically. Uh, those require a site visit. Uh, there was a question about painting the fascia. So yes, uh, that's, a, Typically, a lot of roofers deliver the fascia called primed, which basically means it's ready to get painted. Um, the way we work, and I'm not sure about other roofers, we recommend that the uh, client purchases the actual paint that they want the fascia to get painted. They provide us with the paint, we paint the fascia, and then we install it. The reason we do it that way is because we don't want any issues saying that oh, this is not the color I had in mind and things like that. That just eliminates that problem. So a lot of times we ask the client just to simply provide us with a, a gallon gallon or two uh, <clears throat> uh, and, uh, and we go ahead and paint that and we install it. <clears throat> Our fascias or drippage included power. 
So they are not included in your standard pricing, but there are, the question was, is fascia is included in the pricing? You do have a price list uh, that is available uh, for you guys on what fascia will cost. And it's typically per foot. <clears throat> okay. Sam, someone asked is fascia sometimes required? Like would that, would that not allow you to pass inspection? My understanding is that it's, it's a preference. It is correct. It is not, it is not required. Thank you. It is not required to pass uh, inspection. It's whatever is over the roof is what's required. Okay. You Sam, can there was another over. question too in Go regards ahead. to the, uh, can we give a proper leak penetration warranty penetrating a TPO roof? Yes, yeah, so, so in regards to TPO warranties, there's a 10-year uh, uh, labor warranty and there's a 20-year material warranty um, on, on, uh, on torch or TPO. And there's a 50-year warranty on asphalt shingles. In regards to tile, there's a lifetime warranty on the actual material, the tiles. However, the underlayments are typically warranted for 20 years. And these are all manufacturer information. It's not necessarily a, um, uh, not necessary a, a, a roofing um, warranties with, with the manufacturer warranties. Uh, so, yeah, there's another three, question. Uh, mm -hmm. What is the average three. time for TPO roof? What is what? What is the average time for a TPO roof? Yeah, so sure. T, yeah, so TPO TPO roof uh, is the same time timeline as a uh, asphalt shingle installation. So, uh, like I mentioned, TPO is typically done in small areas of the house, like a, a a deck or a flat garage. A lot of garages are flat, so you know, uh, a uh, like a five square, which is five hundred square foot. Uh, that just takes about half a day. Okay. Any more? Okay. So, so my question on the um, the TPO penetration was in Florida, we very rarely will get permission to penetrate TPO. I understand it's a 10-year warranty, but once you penetrate the TPO, I think there's an issue, isn't there? There's no issue because it gets sealed. So when so it gets sealed by the your your uh, solar installers when they penetrate into the TPO that the bolts all all, all the all the areas are sealed up. So uh, to answer your question, uh, I don't know about Florida, but here in California, um, the the you know obviously that needs to happen properly because otherwise there'll be a lot of issues out there. So. Both the, um, the, the solar installers uh, seal and we work side by side uh, with power. So if there's an issue, there's warranties on both sides. So we come out if there's an issue, uh, power goes out if there's an issue. So we don't want to keep put the customer in the middle. Okay. Yeah. You can go next. So what are things to, to look for? So this is a big issue because uh, there are some roofs out there and your areas would be, for example, if they have wood, wood shake. Uh, so wood shake, you can typically tell it, you know, it's just usually very crumpled looking, brown looking roof. And usually those are old roofs that do not have plywood installed under them. How do you identify that? The best way to identify that is to go into the customer's garage. And because the garage is typically not finished, you can look up and see what's underneath that roof. So uh, when you look up here, as you can see in the picture on the right, you typically see those big gaps between the, you know, the, you know those are called ship laps, the one by six, they're typically big gaps. So that's your uh, red flag number one. The red flag number two is you can see those discolored type 
and material. Those are wood shingles. And what that means is when we tear off that roof, uh, that is correct. There are sometimes so 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 be very careful of that. So when we tear off that roof, it's gonna look like the picture on your left. So that is a big big point of concern. Like like Jonathan mentioned, plywood is not cheap. So you know these things needs to be uh, really um, vetted out to make sure that when we remove that roof, there is plywood underneath that particular. Uh, um, Roof. So otherwise, it's going to look like that, and it's going to require a lot of plywood, and it's going to add six to seven thousand dollars average per project. Very important. So my recommendation is always uh, just take a peek into the your client's garage. Just look up. If you see those uh, woods, there's a gap between those woods. That's your your red flag right there. If they're tight next to each other, they're sitting tight, then you're in good shape. That's a, a, a basic way to validate that. Validate that. Uh, okay. Okay, you can go to next. Now, so this picture on the left looks like that's what it's gonna look like. So uh, in this particular case, that's brand new plywood on the left that got installed. Uh, so that's what it's going to look like. Uh, the materials are loaded on top of the roof. The inspector, uh, in addition to checking the deck quality, uh, looks at the material to make sure that the material that was in the uh, permit matches what's loaded on the roof. The underlayment is on there. The picture on the right, the reason I have that picture on the right is because you guys have an option to sell insulation. I mean, this is really a, a consultation type of a meeting. Um, so, you know, living down here, we, we deal with hot weather and a lot of customers complain about, you know, the, the, the attic getting very hot and if you may have any solutions. So this is also a way you can differentiate yourself from the competition and just be a little bit more consultative in front of the customer. So there is a material on the right, it's an uh, it's a, um, it's a insulation material that is an, uh, it's not a replacement of underlayment. It is an additional layer of the underlayment. The manufacturer is low, E-L-O-W-E, if you want to look them up on the web. And basically <clears throat> what it does, it reduces the heat by 30%. Uh, so it's a 30% uh, uh, heat reduction from the asphalt shingle or any material to the plywood. So it's a huge uh reduction of heat if you want to add the uh the insulation material look it up and uh and just get more educated on it go ahead david so this is another type of project i think there was a little note earlier on so a lot of uh customers have a, have a need for you know called comp out composition out or picture framing and uh, there was a question earlier in regards to how, how do you install uh, over a tile roof? So um, this is, there's a couple of benefits to this type of a uh, project. One is that it's cheaper and it's easier for you guys to install solar panels over asphalt shingles. Also, uh, when solar panels gets installed over typically S-shaped tiles, there's a lot of breakage. Those tiles break easily when you walk on them. So this is a great solution for many customers out there. We do a lot of these projects where we uh, picture frame them. And if you don't mind going to the next, next slide, I'll show you basically what it looks like. So this is a project. So basically what happens is that the tiles were the solar panels are going to get installed or removed and they're stacked and then asphalt shingles will get installed in the area where the panels are going to get installed and then once and then that's phase one of the project then you guys come in and install your solar panels and then we go back there or any roofer will go back there and what is called picture framing which is basically laying the tiles around the solar panels. So the solar panels become very um, 
kind of uh, flush against the the roof and it's not going to be sticking out. So this is a like, uh, sorry, I missed that question. It really doesn't matter. Uh, it really, yeah, Lowy. It really doesn't matter uh, what type of tiles uh, you, you, you have on the roof. This project can be accomplished with S-shape, lightweight, heavyweight tiles. And that is uh, typically referred to as comp out or picture framing. Um, very, very popular in the, in the, in the solar uh, world. Uh, we can move forward. This is another project, uh, another project that you guys will deal with. Typically, the underlayment uh, on tile roofs go back in about 20 years. So when you're dealing with a customer, a lot of times that they have never changed the underlayment, uh, which is a paper or it could be synthetic or it could be paper uh, under their particular roof. So uh, this can this can be accomplished uh, and it, uh, it, it could be a comp out or simply we remove all the tiles, we change the, the underlayment is typically two layers of underlayment. Most likely the original house has only a single layer. Uh, we install two layers of underlayment uh, and then we, we put back the tiles. This way they have a healthy roof to deal with your solar project. So this is a little bit different than comp out because all the tiles go back on the roof as the original day. So yes, they're felt, they're, the, the felt is the paper, typically 30 pounds is the weight of the paper. And all roofers, you know, I know we do it and I think all your partners also, we, uh, we put two layers uh, instead of one. Uh, on on um, tile projects, is comp only for uh, so comp out uh, can be for S shaped tiles. Any type of tile roof uh, can have a comp out type of a project. Sam, uh, there's a question for us. Do we use both synthetic and felt for the underlayment, or just a synthetic only? So, so yeah, so that's really a, a client choice typically for, uh, for changing the paper is felt to two layers. If we do the shingles, which is a compound, we, we use a layer of each. We use the, uh, the paper and then the, we use a synthetic. That's for compound. For a tile reset, Sam, um, just lifting tile, replacing the paper, what do you normally use for that? Say that one more time, sorry. When you do a tile reset, what, yes. are, what are you using? Are you using synthetic or are you using felt? So tile reset will be, will be felt, typically felt, two layers of it. All the valley metals are changed. On the picture on the left, you can see that metal piece on, on, on the valley. So that's very important. A lot of leaks happen in the, in the valleys of roofs. So all the valley metals are changed. And, uh, and then the, the, the two layers of felt is, is installed as well, as well as all the flashing around the vents. We had one question from Jeff. Um, when you look at the underlayment paper felt, you said 20 years, is there any other indication like it's dirty, it's curling, it doesn't pass the bend test. Like any, any indications that the paper's bad when you look at it? Very difficult, uh, it's very difficult. I would not recommend any of you guys trying to figure that out. Um, it is because uh, and you're dealing with a large roof. Some areas might be bad, some areas might be good. But typically uh, as a consultant, I would say if, the, if nothing has happened to your roof in the last 20 years, you basically need to do this, especially since you're installing solar panels over it, because it gets very expensive if something happens and you have to remove the panels and reinstall them. So basically just, just, just advise the customer to make that change if they have not done anything in the last 20 years. Also technology and quality of materials has changed dramatically like anything else in the last 20 years. So what was installed on that roof 20 years ago, the chances are that it has dried up and it were cracks on that paper. So the materials are made better now, obviously, 
and uh, the chances are that that paper that has not been changed over 20 years, uh, there are issues with it. Answer your question? Yes, thank you. Yeah, okay. So that's another type of a project that uh, you will see out there. So go ahead. Next. Oh, okay. So uh, the protocol uh, is really, uh, everything needs to go through uh, roofing at tower.com. That is your, uh, your, your go-to uh, email address uh, for any type of a roofing project. Uh, David here has provided some personal support. Uh, that is his, uh, his uh, contact information if you do need to reach out to him. But uh, uh, like I said, everything needs to go through uh, power unless you need some quick, we have a quick question and some of you out there in the field, uh, you need a quick response. Uh, David is your go-to man. That concludes Thank the- you so much, Sam. What areas do you guys cover so everyone knows what areas? Sure. So we cover uh, all of Orange County, LA County, and we also go into uh, Riverside County, down to Temecula. No in San Diego. Empire. We don't go to San Diego. Pasadena, Woodland Hills, Ventura County. Yes. Anything in the Bay Area? No, we don't have the crew in the Bay Area. Not for this roof for Fred. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's see if we have one or two last questions here. Uh, so, so the, in regards to do, you, do I recommend a roofing company in San Diego? Again, it's got to go through roofing at power.com. They will have that. Thank you, Bill. Okay, great. Salvatore, do you have a question or comment? Yeah, I just wanted to make a comment um, in regards to the questions on TPO and solar. Um, from my solar installation experience, most of the time, if there's a TPO roof, um, Sam is correct. Uh, the solar will usually be installed um, and then the roofers work with the solar company and usually seal over or around the TPO issues to resolve that issue. Because without that, there is you know situations that I've seen where warranties are compromised, but the solution is the roofing company working with the solar company and, and making sure that the seal works and then the warranties are, are there. If I'm in, in incorrect, correct me, please. You are correct. No, it's, yeah, it's a on. partnership it, and, 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 you know, things happen, right? It's how you deal with it. So, you know, if a situation comes up, I, I can't say everything's perfect. You know, sometimes, you know, issues come up, but it's just, you know, uh, basically facing the challenge and going there and fixing it and once you fix it once it's fixed so um that's that's you know that's the way we need to deal with the customer awesome and do you guys cover san bernardino or how far into yeah. san bernardino do you go like would you go to i think you've done rancho mirage palm springs palm desert uh palm no uh island we've done we island. don't really go to palm springs uh, Palm Desert area at this point um, on special projects on there's there's gonna be travel adders it's just it's just uh, you know if we go if we do a project out there you know we we simply are going to have place for our crew to stay at uh, so that that way they don't have to drive back and forth so there are, there will be some travel adders in, in in Palm Springs Palm Desert but other than that we cover a pretty large area um, locally. Dave, if you could type your contact info in the chat just for anyone that can't see the screen right now. Okay. Sam, this is Jared McAllister. <clears throat> I had a quick question about the uh, composition inlays, if I may. Yes. Yeah, so uh, I've been running across this uh, a lot lately where, you know, clients have a tile roof. As you mentioned, you can't always tell if it's light clay tile, if it's concrete tile, uh, light concrete. And it seems like I'm getting different responses from the site survey, whether we need a composition inlay. Sometimes we do, definitely if it's light clay, but sometimes we don't. And I'm trying to understand why sometimes we do some, why sometimes we don't. Can you talk about the what the option is to install on, on tile without doing a comp inlay and like how that how that works 
Yes. So the reason, so the reason a tar becomes light is uh, there is a, a sand type material that is used in the manufacturing process. And for it to become light, that sand is removed and is replaced with a little bit of a different material, which makes them, which makes it more fragile to break breakage. So that's why uh, when your installers go out there, perhaps they are making those recommendations. Their concern is they're going to walk on those tiles and they're going to break. So, uh, so that it, then that causes a lot of problems um, because now you're dealing with, a, you know, and you're drilling holes into a tile that is just going to crack right underneath that bolt. So that's, that's why um, when your site survey people are going out there, they're making those recommendations. Typically 90% of the time is going to be for the lightweight tile and it's just because of the manufacturing uh, process uh, makes those more prone to breakage uh, compared to the standard weight. Um, there are companies out there that just simply uh, make it a rule that every tile job they do a competition you know sh uh, shingle type you know uh, project because it's cheaper for you guys to install the materials that are used, the brackets that are used to install on asphalt shingles is cheaper. And the time that it takes for them to do it is a lot less. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just, it's, it's, and, the, and it looks better. Customers like the looks of it because it's not sticking way up in the air. Sure. So, I guess I would say sometimes though, you know, it's a 10, 15,000, $18,000 adder, which can, scare someone off from going solar my other question is how so when you don't do that how do you install on tile is it penetrated through are you guys like grappling onto the tile on the outside can you explain that part show. yeah i can show if that's okay I mean, yeah so we don't install we don't install solar panels i got you yeah yeah so just real quickly um if you look on Power Pioneers and Paul Leon did a post, so they do lift off a tile and you can see here, they, they put the industrial strength sealant, drill the holes, screw it in, also double back it right here, seal it again, and then they can have the railing. Let me show you another view. So there they are installing the mounts lifting up a few tiles, and then that allows them to put the tiles back and put railing and the panels can then click in the railing. That's probably a real simplified way to say it, right, Salvatore? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll just, I'll just add to that. Um, so basically you have the deck or truss mounted layout, which those are called hooks. So you either have that where they either remove and then install and replace the tile, you have a tile replacement, which is really similar, except they remove the tile and add a similar same shape metal flashing over it. Or you have um, uh, they drill through the concrete and attach to the roof. But in any case, you're never attaching our solar racking to the tiles themselves. You're attaching to the actual decking or the framing of the house through one of those methods. Got it. Thanks for the clarification. Yeah, no problem. I think only in Florida do we do tile replacement. Most everywhere else we do the, the manner. Yeah, yeah, I'm familiar with Florida, obviously, because I'm here and I've installed here. And you could only do that if it's not light tile, correct? Because if, if otherwise, them being on the roof, it's gonna crack, it's gonna shatter. And yeah. so it's- Anything under nine pounds, the surveyors are supposed to weigh the tiles, generally is an automatic trigger for comp out. Any respectable nationwide company that I've ever worked for does it in that fashion to ensure a watertight seal. So it's just the name of the game. Sure. And you have to get really good at being on Google Street View and looking at that roof type and knowing is this standard weight or is it lightweight? What are the signs um, that indicate that? Or looking at a GPS satellite view, there's certain indicators as well that may tell you if it is Spanish clay versus normal tile. Um, well, I'm just gonna 
end this recording. Huge shout out to Sam and David for being here. Again, they are an amazing, amazing roofing partner um, that has joined Power. They're here to help us. You can put in your project handoff notes. You can request one-stop roofing. It's not guaranteed, but it's likely that if you request them, you let roofing at power.com know, you put in project handoff notes, we'll be able to send them a lot of business. Um, so thank you, Sam and David, again, for being here today and helping the team. Appreciate Super the opportunity. Appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. Guys. Thanks, guys. Bye.